Today we're going to talk about some best practices for use with air motors and drum pumps. Uh, one of the um, problems that people have with drum pumps is in the summertime, or sometimes in the winter, these drum pumps as they're air motors running up and down, there's a piston running up and down, and as that air escapes out here, what you do is you get a rapid cooling in these. And a lot of times people complain about these drum pumps freeze up or they frost over. Uh, one of the importance is, this is just a can of regular uh, compressed air for like dusting off a computer. And to show you just a representation of what happens is when you expand air, um, we're about 78 degrees. And if I take this can right here and I just spray it a little bit, and I just hold that for a little bit. So this air is expanding in this can. To show you what happens, this can became extremely cold and we're already down to 67. So it dropped 10 degrees in just a few seconds. So that's that air that's expanding. It's a natural cooling process. And when you have water and humidity in your compressed air, as that air is expanding out an air motor, it has a tendency to freeze. So one, one way you can overcome that is use something like a regenerative dryer that gives you a lot lower dew point than a, uh, let's say, a refrigerated dryer. One of the other issues that you have with drum pumps is lubrication. Is a lot of people just run straight line pressure into them and they have no lubrication. Again, it's an air motor and there's a piston with O-rings that go up and down in here and it needs to have some type of lubrication. So sometimes what you'll see is you might see a lubricator put in a system and this lubricator may be way away from where the actual motor actually is. So what happens is when air passes through here, there's a little needle valve in here, and as air's passing through, it drops a little drop of oil down into that airflow and it atomizes it. And as that air flows out here, that atomization turns to a liquid droplet and it drops out. So normally lubricators are supposed to be very, very close to where you're actually needing the lubrication. If you have this four or five feet away, chances are what happens is that oil will just pool in your hose or your line or your air piping and never get it to where it needs to go. This particular kit we're going to talk about is really geared for the spray foam industry. What you have in most spray foam rigs is you're going to have two two drums, you're going to have an A and a B chemical. So you have two pumps and you might also have a mixing pump. Uh, that's a pneumatic operated mixing pump. So this particular kit we have comes with a regulator so you can regulate the air pressure. It comes with a lubricator. On one of the units it has this little wit pose here. So if you connect this up to your drum that has the extra air motor, you can plug this in here. So now we're not only lubricating the air motor for your piston pump, you're also lubricating the air motor for your mixing valve. The other tank is just going to have basically the lubricator. You can s snap it on there. Again, it has a regulator so you can adjust your pressure so you're not over pressurizing it. You're only using the amount of air required to make your pump work. This will save a lot of wear and tear in your compressor if you use the right compressed air pressure uh, to use that. Uh, it has a shutoff valve there and what we did was we put the quick connects here. So if you need to change your drum pump out, you can just take these over and lay them down, do any kind of maintenance work there, and then you can just take these and you can connect them right back up there. So again, for your best practices with drum pumps with air motors, it's to have super dry air and it's also to have lubrication and air regulation at the right point.